So good morning to everybody. Um, it being uh, nine o'clock, I'm uh, going to begin this program. So thank you all for being here. Um, and I want to recognize some, some folks that are here. Uh, select board uh, member of Virginia Timmons, Town Manager Paul Cohen, Police Chief Colin Spence, Fire Chief Gary Ryan. I think he may have had to leave for other, other duties this morning. And members of the police um, and fire departments. Um, so, to begin the ceremony, um, Cub Scout, Cub Scout Pack 45 is going to present the colors. And please welcome our vocalist, Karen Kaler, uh, and join her in singing the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red Bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does the star spangled banner yet wave or the Thank you, Karen. And now um, I'm going to ask uh, uh, Ch Fire Chaplain Ryan Reveille to give our invocation. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. And Lord, I ask that you be with us as we remember those who fell on that fateful day on September 11th, 2001. I pray comfort, I pray for healing, and Lord, I thank you for those who lost their lives sacrificing to help save others. Lord, bless our time here as we remember those names, and may we feel your loving arms around us, Lord. And we pray all these things in your name, amen. Thank you. Uh, we now have a special guest speaker this morning, uh, Lieutenant Colonel uh, James Harold. He was commissioned in 2006 after graduating from the U.S. Air Force Academy in, in Colorado. He's held a variety of assignments as an acquisition program manager, including in weapons, satellites, special operations, and aircraft procurement. He currently leads a multifunction, diverse team of over 230 military, civilian, and support contractors in modernizing and maintaining the Air Force computer networks, both classified and unclassified. Among the awards and decorations he's received is the Defense Meritorious Service Medal, the Air Force Meritorious Service Medal with two oak leaf clusters, the Air Force Achievement Medal, and the Air Force Commendation Medal. His wife and three children currently live at Hanscom Air Force Base in Bedford. So please welcome Lieutenant Colonel James Harold. Good morning to the people of Chelmsford. 
Thank you for the introduction and the invitation to participate in today's ceremony. I'm honored to speak to you as part of our remembrance of the events of September 11th, honoring our, honoring our fellow Americans who passed away in the attacks that occurred 22 years ago, hundreds of whom were New Englanders. Each of us who lived through that day can likely remember exactly where we were and what we were doing on the morning of 9-11. I'd like to share my story of how that day impacted me, helped me make my decision to serve in the United States military and shape my career in the Air Force. I'm a native New Yorker, born and raised on Long Island, less than 20 miles from downtown Manhattan in New York City. So on a clear day, such as 9-11, we could see much of the city skyline. I distinctly remember the pride and awe I would feel looking out at the city skyline and the excitement each time our family made the short trip into New York. In fact, one of my favorite memories was of having lunch with my dad in the restaurant on top of the North Tower of the World Trade Center. I was a senior in high school in 9-11 in just our second week of the new school year and was in Spanish class when an administrator came by the classroom to let us know that a second plane had hit the World Trade Center towers. Vividly, I can recall the feelings of confusion and then anger when it became clear our nation was under attack. By noon, school was dismissed. Several of my classmates had parents that worked in the World Trade Center complex of buildings. In the coming days, some would learn their fathers or mothers were victims of the terrorist attacks on 9-11. My father was a career New York City firefighter who served tours of duty in all boroughs of the city, including downtown Manhattan. And fortunately for my family, he retired from active firefighting duties earlier in the year, in 2001. So he was not among the 343 New York City firefighters killed in the line of duty when the towers collapsed. My father, my father spent much of the following weeks attending the funerals of his fellow firefighters who sacrificed their lives that day. For me personally, before the events of 9-11, I had been considering military service in some capacity after I graduated high school. After what happened on that day, I resolved any doubts I had and decided I would serve and do whatever I could to contribute to efforts to prevent future attacks on our great nation. In June 2002, I enrolled at the United States Air Force Academy as a member of the first class to sign up post 9-11, knowing it was highly likely we would be called to deploy and fight the terrorist enemies of our nation overseas in the coming years. And indeed, I did deploy multiple times in support of the fight against terrorism, as did my wife, Katie, who also served in the Air Force on active duty. The memory of the ter terrible events of 9-11 is a primary reason why I continue to serve on active duty military service today. I love the United States of America and the freedom we enjoy in this country and I'm honored to defend it. I believe remembrance ceremonies like this one here today in Chelmsford are crucial to honor our fellow countrymen we lost that day and pass on the memory of their, of their sacrifices to future generations of Americans. Further, I'd like to thank the town of Chelmsford's Military Community Covenant Task, Covenant Task Force for their work to foster a sense of home and support for military personnel assigned to the New England region and residing in the local community. A few airmen assigned to my unit reside here in Chelmsford. Military families make many sacrifices, not least of which involves packing up and moving every few years on orders to a new base assignment. I'm glad to know of communities like Chelmsford standing by to welcome military families to the area and ensure they feel at home. Again, thank you for the opportunity to speak today to help commemorate those we lost on September, 9, September 11th, 2001. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Harold. Um, and as, uh, as he mentioned, there were hundreds of people in New England that perished on that day. And 
Today we're going to commemorate those who lived in Massachusetts and, and New Hampshire. We have four speakers who will read the names of those people from Massachusetts and New Hampshire uh, f uh, that perished. And reading the names will be Brad Pan Panton, Paul Cohen, town manager, Pandu, and Brian Fredrickson. So we'll start with Brad. From Massachusetts. Anna William Allison, Stoneham, Massachusetts. Barbara Jean Aristegui, Marston Mills, Massachusetts. Myra Joy Aronson, Charlestown. Garnet Edward Bailey, Linfield. Christine Barbuto, Brookline. Mark Lawrence Bavis, West Newton. David Bernard, Chelmsford. Graham Andrew Berkeley, Boston. Kelly Ann Booms, Brookline. John Brett Cahill, Wellesley. Christopher Karset Karstangen, Turner Falls. Neil Ann Heffernan Casey, Wellesley. Jeffrey Coombs, Abington. John J. Corcoran III, Norwell. Tara Kathleen Creamer, Worcester. Patrick Curavan, Winchester. Captain Gerald Francis DeCanto, Sandwich. David De Milelio, Wakefield. Donald DeTulio, Peabody. Peter L. Hashem, Tewksbury. Paige Farley Hackle, Newton. Alexander Filipov, Concord. Paul Friedman, Belmont. Carlton Fife, Brookline. Peter Allen Gay, Tewksbury. Linda George, Westboro. Edmund Glazer, Wellesley. Lynn Catherine Goodchild, Attleboro. Peter Morgan Goodrich, Sudbury. Lisa Reinhardt Fenn Gordonstein, Needham. Douglas Gowell, Methuen. Andrew Curry Green, Chelmsford. Reverend Francis Grogan, Easton. Molly Rachel Hale, Cambridge. Christine Lee Hansen, Groton. Peter Hansen, Groton. Sue Kim Hansen, Groton. Eric Samedkin Hartano, Boston. James E. Hayden, Westford. Robert J. Hayes, Amesbury. Edward Ted R. Hennessy, Jr., Belmont. Todd Russell Hill, Boston. Cora Hildago Holland, Sudbury. Herbert W. Homer, Milford. John Nicholas Humber, Jr., Newton. Robert Adrian Jalbert, Swampscott. John Charles Jenkins, Cambridge. Charles E. Jones, Bedford. Robin Kaplan, Westboro. Ralph Francis Kershaw, Manchester by the Sea. Brian Kinney, Lowell. Judy, Judy LaRock, Framingham. Natalie Janice Lasden, Peabody. Daniel C. Lewin, Brookline. Marianne McFarlane, Revered. Suzanne A. McKay, Westford. Karen A. Martin, Dammers. Joseph Matai, Arlington. Michael Gregory McGinty, Foxborough. Deborah Medwig, Dedham. Christopher D. Mello, Boston. Carlos Alberto Montoya, Belmont. Antonio Jesus Montoya Valdez, East Boston. Laura Lee Morabito, Framingham. Christopher M. Morrison, Charleston. Mildred 
Naaman, Andover. Kathleen Ann Nicosia, Winthrop. John Ogonowski, Zrakit. Betty Ann On, Andover. Jane M. Orth, Haverhill. Sonia Morales Papulo, Dover. Patrick J. Quigley VI, Wellesley. David E. Reddick, Needham. Frederick Rimelli, Marblehead. Raymond J. Roncat, Malden. Jean Destrehan Roger, Long Meadow. Philip M. Rosenzweig, Acton. Richard Barry Ross Newton. Jessica Leigh Sachs, Bill Ricca. Rama Sali, Boston. Jesus Sanchez, Hudson. Jane Louise Simkin, Wayland. Heather Lee Smith, Boston. Diana Bulls Snyder, Westport Point. Brian D. Sweeney, Barnstable. Madeline Sweeney, Acton. Michael Theodoridis, Boston. Amy E. Toyin, Newton. James Anthony Trentini, Everett. Mary Barbara Trentini, Everett. Kenneth E. Waldy, Methuen. William M. Weems, Marblehead. Christopher Rudolph Zarba Jr., Hopkinton. And from New Hampshire, Thelma Cusinello, William Wilmot Flat. Carol Flyzik, Plastow. Carl Max Hammond Jr., Derry. David Kovalson, Hudson. Robert George LeBlanc, Lee. Louise Neil Mariani, Derry. Thomas F. McGinnis, Portsmouth. Mary Kathleen Shearer, Dover. Robert Michael Shearer, Dover. And Douglas J. Stone, Dover. Thank you, and thanks to Veronica Littlefield, Littlefield for that uh, rendition of TAPS. Uh, and now I'm going to call on Karen Kayla again to um, join, to lead us in God Bless America. The words are in your program if you wish to join, uh, join with her. God bless America. Wide with fire. 
Thank you, Karen. And Karen had to uh, uh, work with a, a bee that was crawling across the podium here in front of her program. So she did an excellent job considering that. And now for our clo closing prayer, I'm going to ask uh, Pastor Ryan to join us again. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, may you bless America, God. Lord, bless us with your comfort as we remember those who fell that day. Bless us as we move forward, God, and may you be the light that guides us. Lord, as we remember, as we mourn, as we still hurt, I pray that you will be our comfort. You will be our healer and you will be our help and our guide. Thank you for this time of remembrance, Lord. And we pray all these things in your name. Amen. Thank you. So, um, so that concludes the formal part of this ceremony. I just want to uh, remind everyone that here to my left we have the, the Chelmsford 9-11 Memorial. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a wonderful place to just reflect about the events that happened that day, and we do have recognition for the two members, two uh, uh, residents from Chelmsford who perished on that day, whose names you heard earlier. And we also um, do have a, uh, a piece of steel from the World Trade Centers, and uh, that's a story unto itself, and, and hopefully one of these ceremonies will, be able, will tell that story. But um, I just want to say that in 2016, I was honored to join the group that went to New York City um, to bring that, that steel back here. So again, thank you all for coming. I know some of us had a challenge to get here, um, and we do have some refreshments in the, in the fire station. So um, enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you for being here.